Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody, and we are here on the start of the NHL season day as I'm Joe Bora from Sports Fanatic News, here to preview the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks' biggest concern last year was, of course, not their offense. Uh, they were still top 10 uh, at 8 in offense goals per game, but it was their defense with their output that was 19th in goals against in a game. So, and then the Corsi against was 28. So, there's numbers that need to improve. But, they added a key piece, one of the more underrated defensemen in hockey, to be able to help improve in that mark, and that is Nate Schmidt. Nate Schmidt has been a very good defenseman for the Knights for the past couple years, and he is going to come in and provide very, very good stability until, I think he's there, honestly, until 2025, if I'm not mistaken, so for years to come, and he's going to continue to just do well. Uh, he's a guy that usually gets you, in an 82-game season, of course, uh, 30-ish points, and plays nice, steady game on the other end as well. He keeps getting better each year, and he just seems to be a guy that once he went to Vegas, they really found his game for him, and since then, he's been getting better and so slowly but steadily progressing each year to be even a better and better defenseman until hopefully, especially in a team like Vancouver, this is maybe where he will eventually not be considered underrated anymore, especially if he plays on a top line where they have in many mocks of their lines an Edler and Schmidt potential pairing up there as well. So I think that is a great pickup. You got all you let you Yevi, excuse me, um there as well, who's going to continue to develop. And then you have uh, Hughes as well. Quinn Hughes, the pickup of uh, Travis Hamanick, is also of course a sneaky one as well. And that's somebody that you're able to <clears throat> just know is going to be somewhat consistent on your back end. Uh, he's a guy that's not a quick skater, obviously, by any means, but it's going to block shots, hit people, just try to play a very nice, consistent game back there. And that's very nice to have. They went from having no depth, really, on their defense, now having a guy like Jordy Ben that's going to be on the bench. When you already have a guy in the minors as an undrafted free agent, Brogan Rafferty, uh, who played very well with 45 points in 57 games for Utica last year, and is a guy that has a very nice shot passing game, needs to develop his defensive play a little bit more, but he's definitely a guy I could see getting some time too. But the key thing you needed to focus on, the big thing that this Vancouver Canucks team needed to focus on which was defense, Jim Benning was able to take care of. And in two parts, you got Nate Schmidt, who's a very good underrated defenseman, I think is going to actually have probably his best season potentially in Vancouver since he's playing up more and going to get even more minutes potentially when he's already a minutes hog at times in Vegas. So I think this is a great move. Travis Hamannick is a great guy to bring in when you have young guys on your defense. Like a Julievi, uh, you have a... Guy that just knows the business, has been there, done that, has been on many winning teams, just knows how to get it done. No, he's not going to always make you happy just because he's a slower skater now on aging, but he's usually pretty consistent out there. He's going to block the shots for you. A Justin Braun-type defenseman. Um, and I think uh, he's a guy that's also a very nice veteran pickup for them. Obviously a guy that's a little overpaid, um, but a guy that's a good fourth-line center when he's healthy. Uh, Jay Beagle still does the face-offs well, does well on the other end, and then obviously they also have Tanner Pearson, who to me is one of the more underrated guys that just consistently puts out a good effort out there and gets you a good amount of points per year and is just able to consistently play a nice steady game out there coming off of a 45-point season in his first full season in Vancouver, which is a pretty nice start for him coming into his contract year this year, so you know he's going to want to show up and show out. And then Brandon Suter's always been a teeter, sometimes like this player. Maybe he could show more steady improvement. JT Miller, obviously, is a key player that is out uh, early, but he'll be back. He'll be shining. Bo Horvat's a beast. He's one of the guys that I love in the game. Great two-way player. Great checker. Great four-checker. He just does everything right and doesn't get talked about enough. He has the potential, really, in the next couple years, only at the age of 25 now, to plan himself as one of the best centers in the league if he really had back-to-back -back couple years. And with how good this team can play as they keep building this 
um, success story here in Vancouver up with Thatcher Demko and net. Of course, you have Braden Holpe, and you got Michael DiPietro as a nice prospect. Uh, Vasily Pakolzin as a prospect. Uh, Hoglander as a prospect. Uh, so they got guys to come up in the future, and they have good defense guys. In Rafferty, if he can pan out, great undrafted free agent pickup. And also, obviously, Yulevi, if he can uh, really pan out, which I don't think there's a question with him, I think he is going to clearly pan out. And then they got Rathbone as a player that could also make it at a certain point on their taxi squad as well. So they have options here, and it's very, very good to have those options. They went from having a defense that struggled to now having a defense with depth, in my opinion. So it's going to be a very fun season for Vancouver. Nice late pickup of Travis Hammond, a great pickup of Braden Holpe. But I think Thatcher Demko is going to be the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, he stepped up huge last year. He's going to take the starting role. Hope he's going to be the guy that helps mentor him along. And they kind of have a probably almost an even amount of games by the end of the season. So there's some rest there for both of those cats. But I think these two get it done. They have a chance to win the Masterson. They could be a great goalie duo that really gets it done. And this is going to be a fun season. Uh, for the Vancouver Canucks. I actually uh, believe you guys have a chance to finish at the top of this division because the one thing you did is you added Nate Schmidt as a very key player. Uh, Jace Horachuk is another solid guy, but you added guys that came in <clears throat> and the one guy, there's only one guy that's really a key installment and then Hamannick who has to learn the system a bit too that came in late, but it mostly stayed the same. Your core stayed the same where the Leafs and some other teams in the Canadian division, made a few more moves, the Canadians, in order to kind of sure fire themselves up, so it could take them more that 10 to 15 game adjustment for everyone to get used to it, where I don't think Nate Schmidt's a guy that's going to take too long, I think he's a guy that's so steady, he just hops in and produces right away, so have a great time watching your great Vancouver Canucks team this year, Vancouver Canucks fans, this has been the Vancouver Canucks team preview, I'm Joe Borer from Sports Fanatic News, enjoy the hockey, peace out everybody.